Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael and I make Game Maker videos. This is a quick addendum to the to the video on functions that I did not too long ago uh, relating to the Game Maker Studio 2.3 update. Static. I mentioned that I would talk about this later and I might as well make later as soon as possible because um, it's relevant. Static properties exist. Let us uh, let us get rid of that global variable because global variables are just a little bit gross. Um, I'll get rid of a, I'll get rid of the printout also, and let's talk about static variables. So static variables are a uh, are a concept that exists in multiple programming languages, and different languages have slightly different approaches to them. It turns out GML does not treat static stuff the same way that it, that languages like Java and C Sharp does, which make me annoyed because I like languages like Java and C Sharp. But if you were to define a variable. And let's say static times you did, what did I call it? Did stuff equals zero. And if you were to then plus plus that variable, and then you probably want to print that out to see the, to, to see the, um, the result of that. Show a debug message times, times you did stuff. If you've never seen this before, this might do something a little bit unexpected. So I'm going to run the game. I'm going to move you. One, two, three, four, five, if you're looking at the console down there. Six, seven, eight. So even though this is, for all intents and purposes, a local variable to this function, and it's being set to zero every time this runs, um, its value persists. So static variables are, are variables that are defined once per function, and their value will carry over in, uh, in future uses of the function. They're not bound to a class. If you were to use this with a struct and try and try and access a static variable just from the name of the struct, it might produce some unexpected behavior and or crash, which I, which I personally find a little disappointing because like I said, I really like C-sharp and um, Gmail takes a different approach to that. I'm assuming that has to do with the fact that, um, that this isn't truly object-oriented, but that's neither here nor there. That is just speculation. So this is how struct. This is how static variables work. If you wanted, you could do the same thing with rotate to point, and it would do the same thing. But it would have its own counter. So one, two, three, four, five. And now when I when I run when I rotate it, two, three, four, five. Uh, you have a separate counter for both uh, for both functions. I'm really good at clicking. I think I made this joke in the uh, in the video about functions. I used to play far too many idle games. Ultimately, the goal of the goal of clicker games is to not have to click. But early on, never mind. So that's straightforward enough. If you wanted to, um, if you wanted to share this value between these two functions, like I did before when I was using the global variable, you can't do that directly. But what you can do, you can get around that. Uh, you can make a new function. called ser count stuff and you can use you can you can stick that uh, the static variable in this function instead of instead of the ones directly and you can call that you can call that function instead so let's run the game now and this is going to simply cause the uh, cause the value to persist one two let's rotate you. Three, four, five, six, seven, and it doesn't matter if I if I it doesn't matter which one of the move or rotate functions I call. It's going to uh, it's going to increment the same static variable. This is I assume everyone watching this video has seen the um has seen the video on functions I did. I don't know if that's a safe assumption to make, but in any case, this is the only the only other code in this project. It's running in the step event. It's detecting mouse clicks and executing one of two functions. And the purpose of that is to just demonstrate uh, demonstrate functions and how they work. So that's static variables. You can also do this to functions. It's not really a thing that's useful to do outside of structs, so I'm not going to talk about it. But if you were to if you were to create a struct like this, and I will talk about it later, uh, you can define methods, and you can mark those methods as static. Which is another thing you can do. This is a, this is a topic that definitely um, merits its own video, probably when I talk about structs later on. But um, 
Hey. If you uh, if you happen to come across that in the wild somewhere, that's what they do. They behave very similarly to um to static variables and functions, except instead of being shared between all instances of the function, as funny as that sounds to say out loud, they are shared between all uh, all instances of the uh, instantiated all instantiated instances of the struct. And I've got to start finding another word to say besides instance because that I I just said that like thirty times in the last ten seconds. Okay. Static variables. They're pretty simple. Uh, they they can also be useful. I have uh, I have as you can see in this video I have found use for them in eliminating the need for certain types of for certain uses of global variables. Uh, you could also use them for other things. So go nuts, happy game making. Uh, my name is Michael. The code for this project will be in the description of the video. As always, I've recently opened a Patreon. If you're into crowdfunding and you want to support these game maker videos. Other than that, I'm going to be making more game dev videos in the future. Um, things related to the 2.3 update, things related to 3D-ness, because I, for some reason, think 3D is a good idea in Game Maker, uh, game development in general. And I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and a chance at me making a fool of myself trying to pronounce it, head over to the Patreon page in the video description. Am I doing this right?